So by the time of this recording, we are three days away from the finale of Mythic Shards Backer Kit. Please check it out in the link below. There are plenty of other videos that I've done, which I'll put a link up somewhere later, maybe over here for the moment. But anyway, we're going to be talking about Farewell to Heroes, which is the noir version of Scion. First up with the setting, there was an event known as the Heracles or Hercules incident, which essentially involved three days where the gods were nowhere to be seen and all were scions fighting titans and keeping the titan spawn under control. This moment led to humanity realizing that scions and the gods couldn't be trusted to the extent that they were basically trusted before, and thus created a, a new group known as T-I-T-A-N, Titan. I wonder why they chose a name for a group that they already know exists and is evil, or at least evil within the context of the universe, but I'm beside myself on that. I don't, I haven't looked too deeply into the lore for the lore secrets, but just know that Titan is not just the name for the Titans and the Titan spawn, but also for this group that is basically policing Scion activity. From there, all the demigods were basically taken out by Titan or recruited, as well as a bunch of public facing Scions who have like fame dots or whatever. The people who sort of flew under the radar were Scions that didn't have their visitation yet, or Scions that hadn't been yet like born, essentially, or who basically kept that low profile enough that they weren't known about publicly. For the daily lives of most people, however, if as long as they're not harboring scions, they can still go to the temples and worship the gods as much as they like. Titan, as well as some people who have powerful artifacts, can detect scions to some extent, but basically scions can fly under the radar so long as they stay out of high traffic areas such as major cities, there are some places that don't subscribe to Scions being evil or dangerous, but those places are few and far between. Titan is a multinational and multi-corporation effort in order to curtail the influence of Scions. They have a variety of other ways to deal with Scions, but the main ones they choose to focus on are to locate and hunt the Scions in order to nationalize them by having them essentially agree to be normal mortals and be under constant surveillance in case they use their powers. They could be uh, recruited to become Titan agents, or they can be imprisoned. Essentially, those who refuse become outlaws and will be hunted in the sense of no matter where they go, they have no harbor to have safe passage, essentially. Now, Titan does have an organizational structure, which has analysts who sort of track the scions. Then you have the operatives, who are small teams, who work with the analysts to hunt the scions. And then you have the support agents who cover everything from being medics to technical experts and uh, logistics and everything in between. They rarely go out in the field, unlike the operatives, and they're mostly mortal. Um, operatives, I think are mostly scions. I think of a hero type or pre-visitation type class. However, there are sanctioned agents, which can be uh, saints, denizens, titan spawn, or even titanic scions, though they are mostly a myth. So draconic heirs and denizens do still exist. So draconic heirs are your dragons from uh, Scion Dragon, and they pretty much are unchanged, however they have a lot more leverage in dealing with Scions because Scions don't want to get captured by Titan. And then Denizens are very varied, so you can have some that are working with Titan and some that aren't. A lot of the Denizens who worked with Scions uh, probably were persecuted as a means of stopping them from helping Scions. And once they stopped helping, maybe Titan lifted the restrictions on them or something of that nature. A big thing that has been introduced into this mythic shard is that there is the countdown timer of essentially schemes. So schemes are plans that players do such as robbing a bank or doing a prison escape and it's a lot more into that noir type setting. The planning For planning the scheme you need to determine how many milestones it has. Usually it is one to plan, one to carry out, uh, which is the minimum, and then you can add more milestones, more for like 
sort of setting up the final heist or whatever you're planning. So an example might be break, it, break into a small bank at milestones for two milestones, but breaking into a Titan prison is five milestones. Now these milestones do set the countdown timer, which begins at seven minus the number of milestones needed and is reduced by one for each failed interval. This is a failure at one of the milestones, essentially. Not a fa single failed roll, but for instance, if you needed to get the schematics for the prison and you failed to retrieve them as part of a milestone, that would cause the countdown timer to go down. Using your powers, I believe, can also reduce the countdown timer, which is bad. And then there is uh, the addition of you can use your path contacts to give yourself an enhancement without any roll. But because the world is less trusting of scions than usual, this might trigger uh, the path suspended condition a lot more easily and maybe even adds in a bit more stuff that you need to do in order to get the favor of a particular group. Additional ways the countdown timer can drop down is by displaying a character's omen from hero. Uh, you can perform, if you perform a feat of strength, it also drops down. If you perform a visible supernatural action in public, that drops it down. Uh, use a boon or marvel near detection wards also does that. Gain three momentum when the momentum pool is empty is minus one. Spending three momentum, however, is a plus one. And the start of a new session is an additional plus one as well. So if you spend a lot of time planning these things out, it might be a lot more beneficial to you. Uh, however, you do have more possibilities of causing your countdown timer to decrease because you suddenly need to use more feats of strength strength to get or feats of scale to get things down when the countdown timer reaches zero this is up to the story guide to determine what is chasing the players and what is causing them needing to uh, cut the plan short and try to escape this is usually either the police or titan it could even be those mythical uh, sanctioned titan agents that we've heard so much about or practically nothing about in addition to the other rules that I've talked about, there are also uh, setting the milestones, which means that you set up what actions your players need to perform. There are action milestones, which include complications such as guards, physical security, moving target, and these <laughs> complications can stack, apparently. Uh, in scenarios where more than one complication applies to a milestone, players can either make a single roll or divide their successes to buy off, buy off each of them individually. Um, several characters can take part in the milestone to handle them separately. So, so there are also investigation milestones, which are used to represent uh, gathering information that was hidden, such as location. Uh, there is the hidden location complication, the secret identity complication, the forgeries and red herrings complication. <laughs> then you have the intrigue milestones, which is invitation only, which is only for social events and is the primary challenge which to get to a venue. And then you have matters of protocol where you have to appear like you're someone who belongs in a location. Additionally, we have complications involving uh, detection wards, which are wards to detect whether a scion is present present there are level ones there are level twos and level threes uh, level ones are about the size of a sheet of paper and can turn up in most homes or small businesses level two can be poster sized and usually are found in corporate offices banks and wealthier locations and then you have the level three ones which are the ones that are reserved for global government or sorry government institutions and titan offices and other high protected areas and they have different effects depending on uh, which level they have but they're dangerous and you probably should avoid them there are additional fate bindings that we have to contend with as well such to represent the innocent or the lore these are people who are common uh, noir trope characters the innocent are people who are looking for the scion because they recognize the inherent goodness in them and might be able to solve the problem that the innocent is looking to solve. 
This is your type of person that you might find from a TV show like Leverage, who is asking for help in order to help them uh, combat an ill in the world. Then you have the lore, who is, draws a character further into the plot by offering them what they need along the way. Some lures are aware their motives are selfish, even cruel, and still manipulate others for their purposes. Now, this could be someone who is akin to a femme fatale or the gender non or gender neutral term I'm really liking is a them fatale, which is kind of awesome. <laughs> I like it. Hiromi got me on that one when we played. Uh, they came from Classified and it was wonderful. Check that out if you can on Onyx Pass. Uh, YouTube page. Farewell to Heroes really hits the noir elements for me, and I, I, I really love the idea that these scions can be good characters. They could also be a little morally gray or even evil if you want, but having the morally gray protagonists, sort of like the noir tropes, means that they are going to be performing stuff like criminals, even though they may not themselves see themselves as criminals, though they are technically criminals by way of the governments and the uh, corporation of Titan. And I really like that. I really like this sort of noir retelling of Scion. I'm, I'm interested in seeing how it plays out on the table. I think maybe there was an actual play. There was probably an actual play at some point. And I'll check that out when I have time because I'm really behind schedule right now and I'm trying to get everything out and about. Um, if you want to check out my Patreon where there's a Mage the Awakening actual play, you can check that out and link down below. The Kickstarter, the backer kit rather, is going to be done in a few days time by the time of this recording. So hopefully you can fund it and we'll get even more shards. Thank you so much for watching and there's a playlist here.